There is a time to bid goodbye to the old and the ordinary and to awaken the beauty within. That time is now. It is time to wake up and take charge of life. Awaken to a new way of thinking. Awakening with Brahma Kumaris. A very warm welcome to Awakening with Brahma Kumaris. We have Sister Shivani with us to answer your questions. A very, very, very warm welcome to you. Om Shanti, Sister Shivani. Om Shanti and thank you. Uh, as you know, our topic today is uh, Happiness Unlimited. I just wanted to ask you the first question. What is the meaning of happiness? If there's one thing that everyone's looking for, irrespective of whatever we're doing, whatever relationships we establish, whatever we're trying to achieve, if we just think about it, the bottom line is we're looking for happiness. We are looking for happiness through what? Through different means, whether it's through possessions, whether it's through objects, through property, through people, through achievements. Just keep on asking yourself, why do I want this? Hmm. And this, and if you ask someone, what do you want? They'll say success. Why do you want success? Because it makes me feel happy. Why do you want to buy this? It makes me and my family feel happy. What do you get out of this relationship? Happiness. So finally, everyone's looking for that one word. But where is it unlimited? It is limited, isn't it? It is, yeah. In fact, uh, don't even know whether it's there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, even if it is for momentarily, it's for a, like a child plays with a toy and it breaks and then again he wants to have another one, then another one. So what are we looking for basically? If we are looking for happiness, it should be solid somewhere, isn't it? It should be permanent at least. It should be permanent. That's most important because if it's something that I like, if it's something that I desire and if it's something that comes natural to me, then it won't be dependent on anything else outside. Because if it's dependent on something, then it can never be constant. How can you have something you desire and not be dependent? Because if you're looking for it outside somewhere, then we are dependent on something. Let's say I feel good if the weather is nice. Mm -hmm. Then my feeling good is dependent on the weather. Yeah, but how can you have a, I mean, happiness without a desire, without dependency? Yeah, that's probably one of the oldest belief systems that we've been living for with a very, very long time because we thought it's to be got from outside. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from achievements or from people or from whatever we do. You know, I'm doing this so that I will feel happy was always the equation that when it's done and it's done in the right way, I will feel happy. So obviously the dependency was on having the act being performed in the right manner. So always, always, right from childhood, right from a child is trained by the parents to feel when you get good marks, I will feel happy. I will feel happy. When you perform this, I will feel happy. When you look good, I will feel happy. So aren't you putting so much of burden on the child, say to make my father happy, I have to do this, to make my mother happy, I have to do this. Yes, and slowly conditioned that if they feel happy, then I'll feel happy. Oh my God. So you have to have so many things. First, I have to read well, study well, get good marks in this class, and again to make father happy and yeah, teacher father happy. happy. Teacher happy. And again, a deep conditioning that when they are happy, I'm going to be then happy. I'll be happy. And if they are not happy, then they'll say, in spite of doing so much, my parents are never happy. Never happy. And if my parents are never happy, how can I be happy? This is very confusing. Can't we have some uh, easier method or the right method where uh, we can explain uh, to our uh, viewers the meaning of happiness and how do you get it without uh, uh, so much of uh, dependency? First and foremost, let's try and see where all it's dependent. Mm -hmm. The simplest, simplest layers, these are deep dependencies it's on performance or on people. But the simplest dependency which we experience the whole day is on objects. I'll feel happy when I buy a new car. I'll feel happy when I uh, buy a new property. Even a simple thing, I, I'm happy when I go shopping. So do I feel, but 
What is wrong in this? Isn't this natural? Is it true is more important. But honestly, I would feel happy if I have a new car. Yeah. You will feel happy when you have a new car, but is it the car which is giving you the happiness is important? Hmm, that's something to think of. I will feel happy when I have a new car, mm. which means if I don't, then it's a question mark. And which also means that 10 days down the line, if the car gets a little scratch or little bump, mm. then again, my happiness is going to get affected mm. because I have conditioned myself into believing that it's the car which is giving me happiness, which is not true. Then what is true? Car, what is giving me happiness? You buy a new car, the car could be X amount, it could be 10 times the X amount, it could be the most expensive car in the world. We sit in the car, it's very nice, very comfortable. So mm. who's experiencing the comfort is the body. It's got very good seats, it's got a very lovely music system, it's got a very powerful engine, very powerful AC, physical comfort. Mm. I'm comfortable sitting in the car, and so I tell myself I'm feeling good. And just at that time I get a phone call saying something unpleasant has happened somewhere at home. Mm -hmm. Will I still be happy? No. But I'm still comfortable. Oh, that's a nice answer. I'm still comfortable. Oh, yeah. The car's still there. I'm still in the car. The car was designed to give me physical comfort and it will give me physical comfort irrespective. Oh, so happiness and comfort will are be two diff different things. It will be two different things. That's very because good. Because anything which is physical is designed to give me physical comfort. The chair we are sitting on, it's physical and it's giving me physical comfort. But I told myself, this gives me happiness. How did it start? I mean, how do we... Is this a wrong uh, idea we have or a false belief? It's just that we were conditioned into it right from childhood. So we've grown up with it, but now we need to question our belief systems. Maybe when, when uh, we were children, the parents would buy something for us and say, Chalo, we'll buy this for him or her. So, so he'll that be happy. he'll be, let us make the child happy. happy. Let's take him out, happy. let the child be happy. We'll take him for a picnic, he'll feel happy. So that is the way we got conditioned. Absolutely. But now, now we have to understand that now I have the best bungalow and I have the best car and I have all the property and the possessions at home. I have every gadget that I want. Mm. And then why am I still looking for happiness if these were meant to give to me? Mm. At least the search should have ended because the list of objects is all there at home. Name it and I have all the gadgets with me. And still I seem to be searching for that feeling, mm -hmm. which means the gadgets were not able to give them to me. The gadgets were able to give me comfort, whether it's my computer today, whether it's my internet, whether it's my mobile, whether it's whatever. They've but made life as comfortable. You said, as you said about the car, sorry to interrupt, the comfort is also no more there when the phone, phone call says there's something un unpleasant has hap happened at home. Where's the comfort also? Physical comfort is still there. But you don't feel the comfort because the other thing is more important. The because pain is, the pain is overcomes that comfort too. No, see, you're sitting in the car, your back is straight, you're comfortable, your legs are very comfortable. They're still going to be comfortable. It's the mind which has suddenly created the pain because of the new information that I got. Now, when the mind gets uncomfortable, it's mind over matter. Mm -hmm. So when the mind is in pain, physical comfort is immaterial. I'm still uncomfortable because who's the I? I am uncomfortable. The body is comfortable, fine, but I am uncomfortable right now. And who's that I? I, the one who's looking for happiness. So that time, the physical comfort doesn't matter. And yet it could be the other way around, that physically I could be uncomfortable. Mm. I could just be sitting cross-legged on the floor. But, but I am happy. But internally I'm very blissful. So I'm very comfortable. How does it one get there? So by understanding that physical comfort is separate from emotional comfort. Mm -hmm. Not mixing the two. It's because I was not able to experience internal comfort, internal stability, which we called happiness. We thought if I'm physically comfortable, mm. then that means I'm happy. And that's why we started to buy happiness. No? We're all trying to buy happiness today. If I buy this and this and this, and the list is never ending. 
which is fine, which is fine to buy all those things, but just not to add, if I buy, therefore I will be happy. We just have to remove that line. I buy because it's useful, it's comfortable, it's productive, it's happiness, no. Because at least I know then why I'm buying. And so then you're I clear about it. I'm very clear about it. So at least I don't tell my mind, when I buy this, then I will be happy. Then it's again postponing my happiness. Oh, and also putting a condition to it. Condition to it. Let's say I'm building a new house. And I say, when this house is built, and when I shift into this house, then I will be happy. Which could mean after a year after two years. And then so, when you go in there, then, then I'll say, oh, I, when I have beds, when I have these trees, when I have so much of interior. So then again, postponing my happiness into the future. Every time, start from a child. A child is in school. We look at a child in school and we say, student life is the best life. But a child looks at his grown-ups and says, they're so lucky, they don't have to do homework, they don't have to give exams, they're so lucky, I wish I was going to be in their place. <laughs> So he's looking to be out of school so that he can be happy. I'll be very happy when I go into college. Then he gets into college. And then I'll be very happy when I get my job and I'm married and I have a family. Then you do that. I'll be very happy when my children are settled and everything is fine. Then your children are settled. I'll be very happy when I retire. When will I be happy? Because I kept on postponing it to I will be happy when dot, 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 fill in the blanks. And every time there was a new blank to fill in there. And we kept on telling ourselves, when this happens, I will be happy. How sad. That's How why sad. we are not happy. <laughs> because That's it's why sad. we see so many people who are rich, who are, they have helicopters, they have private uh, airplanes, their own boats, everything. And still they go around uh, temples to temples, gurus to gurus. They say, okay, go here, go there, do, oh. and finally, what are they seeking happiness? And it, still it not does getting. To and all it started us. from childhood. Because my father did this, then his grandfather did that. And it can go on. How does one put uh, an end to this or a change? First, understanding that it's separate. And second, understanding it's my internal creation. And I can create it irrespective. That sounds Irrespective. a little difficult, my internal creation and... Uh... See, I bought the car hmm. and then I say, I'm happy. Car is physical, so no feelings, no emotions. So obviously the car is not giving me happiness. So what's giving me happiness? I create a thought, wow, I bought a car. I finally bought what I wanted. These are nice thoughts, no? These are very good. Yeah, but honestly, don't you see a child with a toy, he's bubbling with happiness, enjoying. A man with his new car, he's enjoying. Or like a woman with a new uh, jewelry set. Isn't that happiness? Yeah, but is the jewelry set giving the happiness or she's creating the thought of having possessed that set that's creating the happiness? But that cannot be created with, minus the jewelry set, no? Aha. Uh -huh. That means I need an object yeah. as a stimulus hmm? to create a response. Yeah. Right? Right. So it's the object. Object can be anything. Mm. Like you said, the jewelry set. So that is an object. I look at the object and I create a thought inside. And it's, you, it's created or I create? It's created because it's created. I'm seeing this. Huh, so it's after seeing it, who creates it? This is a lovely piece of jewelry that I've just I got. love it. I'm so happy. Yeah, but who created that thought? What a lovely piece of jewelry. That's a difficult question to answer. I Who create or because this it's it got created. A physical piece of jewelry. Physical. Doesn't have thoughts and feelings. Okay. It's physical. Right? Okay. So I look at it and I create a thought. What a lovely piece of jewelry I've been gifted with or I've bought, whatever. If ten minutes later somebody walks into the room and says, This is not looking nice on you this at is all. This is fake. Okay, this is fake, <laughs> fine. So then, now who's creating the response? Now, really? It's not nice? How dare she talk to me like this? Same jewelry set. Different thoughts. So, finally... If the went... stimulus was creating the response, the stimulus will keep on creating that response irrespective, no? Now that same piece of jewelry, I can show to 10 people. 
will all of them create the same thoughts after seeing that jewelry set? Mm -hmm. For someone, it could be, oh, it's too loud. I can't wear this. I don't like this at all. For someone, it could be, I'm sorry, I don't like jewelry at all. For someone, it could be, I really want this. For someone, it could be, how sad, I can't afford this. This piece of jewelry is the same. But if this piece was creating the thought, huh? my reaction to the piece it's is my creating. thought. It's my thought. So I am reacting, yes. so I am creating. I am creating. So I am either creating uh, unhappiness or happiness. Okay. I can't buy it, I'm so sorry, I feel bad, or oh, it's not so good, or it's fake when I hear that. All the, you mean to say we are all the time creating on our own? All our own. So we could create either thoughts of pleasure, hmm. we could create thoughts of jealousy with hmm. the same object of jewelry, or I could create the thoughts of hurt, anything. Stimulus is the same, the piece is the same. If the piece, we need to be very clear, if the piece had to create the thought, it would create the same thought in everyone. Because the piece hasn't changed. That's a very nice line. Can you repeat it again? If the piece... If that piece, the object, whether it's a car or it's that jewelry or it's this lovely garden, if it's anything, this... if it's this what's creating the thought, then it will create the same thought in every person. Mm. See this greenery. To someone it could be, wow, it's so beautiful. It's lovely to be with nature. And for someone would just walk through and wouldn't even realize the importance of it. A builder might say, why are you wasting so much of land? I can create so many flats here, so many buildings. How, what, how silly these people are. The different responses to the same stimulus. Stimulus, same, responses, many. And the response is the choice of the creator. And I am the creator. So I, the creator, is creating unhappiness, happiness, whatever it is. But that's a very good uh, uh, answer, Sister Shivani. And a lot of my uh, thoughts and questions have been answered through this. But how does one do without a stimulus? Once I understand that I'm creating a thought, as of now, we were not aware that we are the creators. We thought thoughts were happening because of something. You know, one is object. One is if you just say something to me. Hmm. Let's say you say something which according to me is a little rude. Hmm. And then I get hurt. I never ever thought that I'm creating it. I very conveniently say, you hurt me. By? Your words. By my words. Whatever you said, you hurt me. So I thought it was all coming from outside. outside. And then I say, you need to talk nicely to me now for me to feel better. You better make up. Yes. So you better apologize because once you apologize, I'm going to feel better. This is dependency. Then he would say, I never meant that. I didn't Whatever, mean that. I'm hurt, but you hurt me. See, we can just go on and on. I'm hurt because of you. I'm angry because of you. I'm upset because of you. I'm jealous because of you. I'm happy because of you. My God, and so everything them is would... because of everybody around and what about me? Then there's, I have no d responsibility on, on, for myself and nothing. No responsibility and no control. How helpless we are if we are always dependent on anything external. Isn't that weakness? But isn't, the way, isn't that the way we are living our life today? No, but aren't we uh, weak that without so and so I can't do anything, without this I can't do anything, aren't we dependent? So if you really go deep into this, don't you feel very weak? How sad that I'm dependent like... That's why we're not happy. Because it's how sad. Oh. That's why we're not happy. And the minute I understand that this is an illusion, they're not controlling me. I'm not dependent on them. I have a choice what I create. Independent. And that's why spirituality, the first thing that it gives you is freedom. Because you're liberated. You're liberated from all the dependencies which you thought you were dependent, which was not true. Not true at all. And then we kept on postponing our happiness or our, you know, we just kept on postponing it. And we conveniently told ourselves, how can I be happy if I don't have this? Yeah, it's very difficult to understand, you know. How let's can say, I be happy without... Okay, let's say objects, but what about achievements? Yeah, only those people who achieve will be happy. 
I wanted to achieve this particular goal. I had to reach here and I haven't reached there. So how can I be happy? Only people who will achieve what they want will be happy. This is what we thought because this is what we were taught when we were children. If you uh, get... I always thought that it was very natural and uh, I mean, it was normal. That if I fail uh, in uh, getting a job three times, then I feel depressed and it's very normal, I used to think like that. Because we thought that my happiness is dependent on getting the job. So it's very normal, that's what we thought, it's very normal. And that's why we thought that getting upset is normal, getting tensed is normal, to worry is normal, to fear is normal. To feel sad is normal. To feel sad is normal and to feel happy is once in a while. But supposing I tell this to somebody, he'll, he'll just give me a slap, he'll say, don't, don't talk nonsense with me. He says, this has happened to me, that has happened to me, all this, so many problems, and you say just, that is conditional and this is wrong and false belief. Problems, yes. Challenges, yes. Situations, yes. Upset, choice. It's problems, like Problems, yes. Problems? Situations, yes. Challenges. Failures, yes. Yes, absolutely, yes. Only upset is my choice. Yes, because everything else is outside. Problems. But that outside is also disturbing me inside, no? That's a choice. It's my does, choice. Does it disturb everyone the same amount? One failure, one failure, someone could go into depression, someone could commit suicide, and someone would say, okay, I'm doing it again. And someone would just go way ahead the next time. Same failure. Hmm. Different responses. So failure is the same. Object is the same. People are the same. Situations are the same. The world is the same. But each person will respond react differently. So that reaction is in my hand. Yes, and that's why my thought and feeling is in my hand. Just this one mechanism will change the way I live my life. But isn't it too quick the moment something happens and you react? In between, there's no, not even time to think that, look, this is a thought and it is just uh, some, uh, uh, something outside and not inside. All the things you've talked just now, where is the time between something happening and me to control my reaction? That's when we're living our life in a very automated mode. As if now we're living our life in a very automated mode. You know, it's like a machine. What's the difference between a machine and a human being? What's the difference? A machine has no choice. On, on, off, off, no dependent choice. Dependent on electricity, dependent, dependent on... Dependent on the person who's using the gadget. So no choice. What's the difference between a machine and a human being? A machine has no choice. You press a button and it's on. Press the button again, it's off. Human being, we have a choice. Someone comes and says something to me, they press a button. If I'm a machine, I will say, obviously I had to get angry. What is obvious about it? Obvious is only for a machine that obviously it had to get switched on because and even your friend was obviously you're right, Shivani sister. Yeah. Anybody would in your in your place. Because I would have gone. Yes, because we are all living in the automated mode. But everybody is living in that mode, or what? Except that except mean, a few saints or some. No, it's not about saints. It's just about being aware that we're human beings. People are pressing the button, but we have a choice. Now that. The clock is pressing the button and pressing me to say it's time to say goodbye till the next uh, episode tomorrow. So before Sister Shivani leaves, I'll request her to tell us something about uh, meditation you do every day and probably because of this meditation you've been uh, able to understand the difference between uh, what is happening outside and how, what I'm creating inside and things which uh, happen outside doesn't necessarily mean that I have to react that way and we have false beliefs, so this, 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 and so many beautiful questions answered. So, Sister Shivani, can you tell us how we can do this kind of uh, meditation? Because meditation, usually uh, people think meditation means sitting in a corner and not thinking, not thinking, and people say, it's so difficult for us to not think. So if you can give us, like you said, made so many things easy, can you make this a little easy for us? Uh, meditation, of course, we'll see it in detail. 
But a very simple thing is meditation is not to stop thinking, but meditation is just to be aware of what I'm thinking and to just choose what I'm going to be thinking. To be aware of what I'm thinking? Yeah, like you know how we are aware of what we are speaking? I'm not aware. You're not speaking in an automated mode. You choose what to speak. You choose your Probably words. Probably in the next episode we'll <laughs> yeah. talk about this too. You choose your actions. You choose when to sit, when to get up, when to walk, when to sleep. We're choosing our actions. We're choosing our words. Mm -hmm. Of course, when the thoughts become, we think automated, so sometimes it comes out so fast that we feel even the words are automated and we say, well, I didn't mean to say it, but I just said it by mistake or, you know, this is not what I meant to say. So it's be what we mean. We say only what we mean to say, but we're not aware. But one step further to be aware of what I'm thinking. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the journey of this program, to choose our thoughts and thereby choose our responses. It's a simple exercise we begin every morning and can do it any time during the day to just watch my thoughts. What am I thinking right now? It could be about work. It could be about family. It could be about friends. It could be about myself. Just look at my thoughts. And now look at myself during the whole day. Driving to work. Reaching my desk. Interacting with people. Situations work to be done. I am doing everything, but I am choosing what to do. And I am choosing how to be while I am doing them. I have a choice how to feel while I'm doing everything I'm doing outside. I have a choice how to feel while I'm doing everything that I'm doing out there in the world. Situations come, targets, goals, people, external. Let me look at myself, how I think, how I feel, and then how I respond. It's my choice. I am the creator of my response. Just have to be aware of this the whole day today. Thank you, Sister Shivani. Let us revise what we've just discussed. Happiness is not dependent on physical objects. Objects, possessions, gadgets are designed to give us comfort. Physical comfort is different from emotional comfort. Happiness is an internal feeling. Happiness is our internal creation and can be created irrespective of external comforts. We use objects as a stimulus to create a response, but the response is our choice. Different people create different responses using the same stimulus. If you wish to discuss your problem or have a question to ask, or want to know your nearest Raj Yoga Meditation Center, write to us at awakening at bkmail.org or call us on UK 440-75304-26770, USA 1-347-448-2359, India 919999-744-555, Om Shanti